Five, four, three, two, one. It almost looks like you're almost hitting me when you do that. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Good morning, guys. Good morning. Buenos dias. It is mon Tuesday night for us. And Wednesday morning for you guys. Yep, which means tonight is Bible, Bible study. Bible study, yay. We're going to, I believe, finish Ephesians that we've been doing over the past almost two months <clears throat> and um we go live with that so we're gonna see you you're gonna get an email you're gonna get a text within the hour of it starting you're so. gonna get a reminder guys yeah that yes you shall have a reminder today was a little warm outside in case you guys are wondering. It was perfect for me. But I hydrated because I don't want you to worry. Oh, my God. <clears throat> so we, oh, man. We saw an amazing movie today. Wait, before you even say that or the name, I'll let you do the rest, but. I don't know the name. I do. Guys, have you guys ever watched a movie where you're watching that movie and it is just so powerful that you just begin to pray and man, the spirit just begins to bear witness and you just, man, the, the prayer, you just started praying in tongues and I just started praying and we were just like, man, this, there was just one, that one part that was just amazing. The whole movie was amazing. Yeah. But especially this one part. And you know, it. I cried. I cried a lot during that movie today. But um, the name of the movie. You want me to tell them the name of the movie? Yeah, because I don't know it. Overcomer, Overcomers. I know it was the same directors that did War Room, Fireproof, Courageous, mm -hmm. uh, Flywheel. <clears throat> so it was the same. It was two brothers, the Kendrick brothers. It was so amazing. And um, each time they do a movie, they always outdo mm -hmm. their last one which um, I'm a huge fan of their movies ever since uh, Flywheel, actually, which they did that one. That one just looked really um, homemade. Yeah. But, man. Oh, then they did Facing the Giants first. So they did Flywheel, Facing oh, the I Giants, like Facing the Fireproof, Giants. Courageous, War Room, and now this one, what is it called? Overcomers. Overcomer. Yeah, so... <clears throat> We um, went to the Christian bookstore, and it was finally open. Yeah. Praise God. I had to buy some, some envelopes and Yeah, things and I the saw church. the movie for sale. I wanted the Blu-ray. They didn't have it, but it was okay. The, the DVD was on sale. Man, it was so good. Yes, it was. Absolutely. Yeah. Then we went to the church, and we went to go open up so that they could pick up all the pallets and the garb... What are they called? Garbon Garbondos? Uh, There's some big old boxes that they pick yeah. up with. What's it called? Gondolas. Gondolas. Is it? Yeah, oh. you got it right. Dang. And then I went to go return. Um, I went to go return a big tent that my neighbor. We have some amazing new neighbors there, man. Uh, such a blessing. But They're like he, an insurance claim company or something. Yeah, like. they do insurance claim com uh, insurance claims for like auto accidents or something. No, no, for oh. auto floods, for like home and oh. stuff like that. They go and they do all the claims. I think it's the same thing Olga does, Sister Olga. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's the same thing she does. But you know, he's been such a blessing. He even set it up for us and everything so that we can have shade over the weekend for the feeding and everything. So I wanted to go return that. And then we had the neighbors across the street and across the street on the other side as well, who let us use all of their um, cones, all their cones for, for us to separate, you know, the area of the street. And I was just blessed. So I'm just going back and I'm giving back all their stuff and just telling them thank you, giving them a big thank you um, just for everything. I know that yesterday was a very tiring, which Monday for us was very tiring that day. We were trying to just catch up on a little bit of rest, but we yet we did some some um, some errands and stuff. Yeah. But today we did go back. We picked up a little and did some stuff over there. There's still more work to be done, but um, we're gonna get it done and, and finish off. How many pallets were there? A total of 
the the first row had 14 and then 14 on the next one so that was almost close to 30 pallets 30 pallets of food yeah that we i didn't realize i thought we had less yeah it was an insane amount of food 30 but, pallets but some of them came with just like like two maybe a few of them came with two but not all of them yeah a lot of them were just on their own yeah. but and that's not even that's not even counting the gar gondolas gondolas i'm probably saying it wrong and the boxes because there was boxes of food too yeah so you guys you know we praise god and as david and i have been talking and and it, it almost seems like that seed was planted for us to to want to be able to do this again and we're kind of you know excited that um maybe in three months or so you know we can plan or something or even sooner yeah to plan another giveaway um probably this time we won't be doing the barbecue at the same time because it was a lot a lot of work um and it keeps people it keeps people stopped for a long time and we don't want people to have to wait really long hours or whatever yeah. in line um because we're trying to catch up with food so but we want to give away groceries and an abundance of groceries and fill up their car and i think this will be an opportunity for us to be able to do that so yes we want to do this again we're gonna plan on it um and just go and be a blessing to our community you know definitely yeah. Amen. oh and i came up with another design oh yeah this one's really cool guys what i actually crazy? Really liked it that i wanted one immediately yesterday we came home i don't know what we were doing and i forgot what you had to do because we had to leave again within 20 or 30 minutes the laptop was already, was already on photoshop was open and i'm like how am i gonna kill these next 30 minutes because i was kind of just bored i forgot what what it is that we were doing did we have to i don't know anyways oh i needed to go to the store and to go to the bank yeah so yeah. i sat in photoshop anyways um came up with this design it was really cool oh, it's right there oh is this one mine or yours i don't know if it's big it's probably mine look at that dang and look at that it has our little it has our little um the little house the little house for house arrests on the sleeve and of course the back that's you know i don't know why i started doing that as a little trademark for yeah. for uh true wear but it just became a trademark that every shirt that comes out of this house i have to have a cross on it yeah i just want a cross on the back Can you know you tell we like crosses <laughs> But I just, I just need it to have a cross, you know, and it looks really cool. But look at it again, guys. It's really bad. Cool. I liked it so much that I wanted one for me. So yeah. So I got one. Actually, I added we can it. be twins, babe, on I, Sunday. I added it to the website already. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. can we be twins and wear it on Sunday together? Sure. All right. I've been preaching in t-shirts throughout the whole pandemic. <laughs> I haven't wore a suit. We're gonna be twinsies. So, uh, all right, guys, um, we have a... We had somebody that By special question. request, mm -hmm. um, we were asked to talk about Peter and the way he died. You're, like, way out of, out of the shot. No, I'm not. You always say that. You're like this. <laughs> I'm going to do it like this. Stop it. So, uh, let me see. How do I start this whole thing? Set the stage, babe. Let me set the stage. Set the stage. So, as we know, all of the disciples except John were all martyred. They were all killed for their beliefs in Christ. Every single one of them. Uh, we see James, his head was crushed by a giant rock. We see, I think, is it, I think it was Matthew was drowned to death. Um, each one of them died different ways. Some were beheaded. Some were stoned to death. Mm -hmm. Um, they were just killed in horrible, horrible ways, you know, for following Jesus. But Peter was known as basically the, the leader there, yeah. you know, along with James, the half-brother of Jesus, uh, and obviously John too. But Peter uh, was put in prison by the emperor decades later. 
And, uh, well, actually, we should read the scripture first. You want to? Yeah, that okay. sets the stage better. If we could go to the Gospel of John. John 21? I don't or which know. which one? The last chapter of John. John 21. Yeah. John 21. I'm just going to read it in context, even though we've talked about the beginning part, but just so we can kind of like, you'll remember. I'm going to start at 15, just to put it in context. Okay. It says, so when they had eaten breakfast, see, Jesus had already resurrected and he appeared to the disciples. And here they are having breakfast with Jesus. Jesus was already resurrected. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? And he said to him, Peter says, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, feed my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, tend my sheep. And he said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Before I go on, I want her to read it, 15 to 17, and then we'll go back. Okay. It says, after breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, master, you know I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Then he asked a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, master, you know I love you. And Jesus said, shepherd my sheep. Then he said a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was upset that he asked for the third time, do you love me? So he answered, master, you know everything there is to know. You've got to know that I love you. Amen. This camera's a little crooked. Now it's crooked. Now oh, it's crooked. Is it? Like this, yeah. Oh, it's... It needs to go down a little bit on that side. Right there. Okay. That was weird. I don't I'm want you guys... Like this. I'm going to this. be like this. You're going to hurt your neck. I don't want you guys to think we're in a San Francisco house. <laughs> so, he has this conversation with Peter. Mm-hmm. And he asks him three times... Do you love me? But then he goes into this part right here. It says in verse 18. So after that conversation, Jesus says, Most assuredly, I say to you, and he's looking right at Peter, right in the eyes. When you were younger, you girded yourself and walked where you wished. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. This he spoke, signifying by what death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, follow me. Jesus said, feed my sheep. I'm telling you the very truth now. When you were young, you dressed yourself and went wherever you wish. But when you, when you got, get old, you'll have to stretch out your hands while someone else dresses you and takes you where you don't want to go. He said this to hint at the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. And then he commanded, follow me. Yeah. So Jesus prophesied to Peter a few things. Number one, that he would be taken to somewhere where he didn't want to go. Yeah. And two, um, crucifixion was very... Jesus wasn't the only one crucified. Crucifixion was actually a way to punish criminals back then. It was a common thing. And the fact that he says, you're going to stretch out your arms. In other words, see, Jesus had just resurrected. Yeah. And he basically told Peter, you're going to die like I did. You're not going to want to go, but you're going to have to go. You know, so then years later, this is not in Bible, but guys, there is church history. There is church documents. There is government documents. The Roman Empire documented everything. And... I, I believe, I could be wrong, around 30 years later, Peter was an old man. And he was arrested for preaching the gospel, for being a leader of the church, because they wanted to stop Christianity. 
And the way they chose to execute Peter was by crucifixion. Because in other words, they said, oh, you want to be like Jesus so much? Then we're going to kill you like Jesus. Mm. And historically speaking, uh, Peter basically begged them and said, I'm not worthy to die like my Savior. I'm surprised that they even really did give him his wish. I, I, I know. I'm surprised. I'm that wondering, too. I'm wondering, me personally, I mean, this is just me, guys. This is my thought. Did he maybe say something that, you know how when you use reverse psychology? Yeah. <laughs> when somebody uses reverse psychology, did he maybe say something for them to be like, you know what? No, we're not going to crucify you like him. We're going to turn you upside down. But that's exactly what his heart wanted, mm. you know, because he was so humble. Yeah, well, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't mention how. Basically, he said, I'm not worthy to die like Jesus, like my savior. If you're going to crucify me, then crucify me upside down. Yeah. Uh, you're right. I mean, the Romans might have been like, this guy's crazy because that's going to hurt even more than a regular crucifixion. Think about it. You imagine hanging yeah. with all your weight on your on your feet with a giant nail through them. So they're probably like, all right, dude, you want to you want to go through pain? Fine. We'll do it for whatever reason. Uh, he said, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy to die like my savior. And we were just discussing like why why did he say that? What did what did he mean by he's not worthy? Was did he think of himself less than or one thought I had was I mean, I don't know, just a thought is him saying I, all we've been preaching is Christ crucified, Christ crucified. The last thing I want to do is anybody talk about Peter crucified. Yeah. You and know? that and that speaks volumes to him being having uh humility yeah and being so humble like he don't he goes like it's in Not his way so, yeah like i don't want to make this about me yeah you know, so I, it, I it's know. all it's all like you say all the time it's perspective mm -hmm. um and how what we could think is it can be taken wrong it, it can be misconstrued but at the same time it, it can actually really have an amazing meaning yeah so it can go both ways you know yeah. People people can use that in a negative way and be like, well, where's his identity in Christ? Well, we're this, you know, we're that or, or something like that. In, what, 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 in, in, what in, in, in a sense where, you know, like earlier I was telling you and I said, well, you know, feeling non-worthy or feeling that you're not worthy enough, that's not having identity in Christ because see, having identity in Christ, if Christ lives in you and you know that, then yeah. you know that you are worthy. He deems us worthy, you know? Yeah. So it made, I guess it made me think of that, but yet then we got to think about the relevance of those times and what you always say that yeah. you got to remember that things were different in those times as to what they are well, now. Well, I mean, for us, we're looking at it 2,000 years ago. Yeah. Um, for them, they could still hear the crowd. In there, you know, like think back thirty years. I can yeah. still think back thirty years. Maybe things that caused me pain, you know, it's like it's still fresh. You know, thirty years ago I was eighteen years old. You know, there's things I went through in my life back then that it's still fresh. Yeah. Now you know you what? Know? You're right because last night you were watching a documentary of something, and it was very to me. It was talking about. Um, things that women went through, you know, when they got abused or something like that. And it was it it was hard for me to hear those things. Yeah. You know, because there's moments that things can still be fresh. And yeah. I asked you, I asked you politely, you know, do you think you can change that? Yeah. You know, because Well, I didn't even know what it was about. Remember? Yeah, we, I know. We watched the trailer and I said, "Hey, I keep hearing this guy's name." Yeah, and you're like, yeah, let's watch it. I had yeah. no idea. I thought it was like, and, and it and it became a little bit. It was just, I don't know. It was maybe what they call now triggers, or something. Yeah. Um, but it just, it really did. It did really hurt me, and I was feeling a little heartbroken. And I was like, hey, let's just change that, you know? Well, just like remember we we're watching that that one little short series on that Broward. Or yeah, the Broward story about yeah, the about young the young man. man. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was the fifth episode was about him in solitary, I think. Yeah. I think it was a fifth, like it's still stuck in my head. Yeah. 
and and it that that jacked me up, man. Yeah. That really messed me up because he was talking about when he was in solitary, you know, and it was weird because. I, we went into it and it was very interesting it was like sad and everything I'm just watching that just regular old thing but then when that fifth episode came on about solitary man it triggered me so bad and it, I kind of like freaked out a little bit so I get what you're saying yeah. you know yeah so so now let's go back to Peter mm-hmm. saying I don't want to be crucified like my savior I'm not worthy I don't think it was a sense of him not knowing his identity I think it was it was still fresh yeah yeah. It was very fresh still. So, And I think also, like I had said, um, I had told you that, I mean, right before Jesus was crucified, the last thing he did was deny him those three times. Mm-hmm. That was one of the last things. So I think that also could have been because, I mean, can you imagine your one of your last memories being something like that? Mm-hmm. And you feeling, gosh, I'm not even worthy. I'm not even worthy to be called your son, but you call me son anyways, and you love me anyways, or this and that. I denied you three times. Yeah. You know, but yet then you came back. You came back to me to the fisher boat. You you were there, and you still came looking for us. Yeah. You know, so it can be definitely that sign of humility. Yeah. So um, I know uh, I'm not sure what part of this interested the brother that asked us to talk about this. Um, so I'm gonna throw a couple other things at, mm-hmm. at you Go about for it. that. Do is, it. Is is um, we got to understand that history, especially during that time, the Roman Empire, they wrote things down. For instance, um, if we didn't have a Bible, like p- many people say, atheists say, "Man, I wish the Bible wouldn't have been here. That way, people wouldn't follow this false god or this or that." But I, I want you to know something that. Through the Roman documents, we would they had documented things about Jesus so much that even if the Bible hadn't lived up to this time, mm-hmm. with writings from non-believers, from Roman officials, Roman emperors, Roman governors, we would know there was a man named Jesus that had followers, that there was a man named Jesus that would that use magic, they said, to cause people to be healed, that People followed him. He was crucified by Pontius Pilate and that the believers of, though they call him the way, they didn't call him Christians yet, believed that he rose again after three days and they worshipped him. This is stuff that is so... So Regardless, it was still documented. A lot of people Mm -hmm. say, how do we know Jesus even existed? All, All you have is the Bible. No, man, there is a lot of information out there that the Roman that were against Jesus documented his very existence, documented that many followed him, documented that thousands followed him after the supposed resurrection, they said. Yeah. You know, um, here's the thing, right? They could have crushed Christianity right away by just parading his dead body. After the claims of his resurrection, all they had to do was be like, you know what? We'll we'll crush this right now. Go pull his dead body out and parade it through Jerusalem so everybody Mm -hmm. can just, we could just kill this thing right now. But you know what? They couldn't because the tomb was empty. Empty. Oh, man, you brought out the turntables. (laughs) So. Empty. Eh, 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 Empty. So so all all the disciples, all the apostles, died horrible deaths except John. John was the youngest of them all, but he went through hardship. He was boiled alive and didn't die. He was put in prison. A lot of things happened to John, but John was the only one that lived his life and died as an old man. All the rest, even the Apostle Paul. Paul was beheaded. Yeah, and the Um, youngest, and the youngest, and the first was Stephen, right? he was he yeah was he was an apostle though but he no, was a disciple he, he was yeah. one of the disciples one of the younger ones yeah so. yeah he was yeah. he was like the baby wasn't he of the of them it doesn't say it never said his age um but the um the i was gonna say something though about the disciples that were killed and the way they were killed you were talking about yeah the way they were killed there was another point i was gonna make ah it just left me I threw you off. yeah a little bit <laughs> Sorry. Um, Maybe I'll just 
I'm on the no, board. just when I'm on a roll. Just let me roll. I don't know when you're on a roll. I was talking. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, but there's times where we're suppo- we go back and forth. Yeah, I know. No, but it, what was it? See how he is, you guys? What? What? <laughs> no, seriously, though, man, it was it was good. If it's good, it's going to come right back to you. Lord, yeah, but I was ready to end the all video. All right, Lord, just give it right back to you. I was ready to end it because it's already late. You crescendoed and you were ready to come down with it? Yeah, it was just going to be the mic dropper. Bam! Bam! But no mic It's going to come to you right now. I don't know. So anyways, um, you know, I, I think it was a good question. I'm not sure why you asked the question about Peter, but nevertheless, you know, it, it there's... There, there's uh, always good questions because there's always things people wonder about. Amen. There's always things, you know, that people say, oh, I wonder about, how do they know about this? How do they know about that? You know, and church history, guys, is so rich. It, it's really exciting. Uh, and, and there's letters upon letters upon letters that have proven um, of Christianity. Because, you know, growing up, I grew up, like, I didn't grow up Christian, but in a Christian home. And my parents are like, very Pentecostal, little Pentecostal churches. And a lot of Latin people, guys, they come out of Catholicism. They come out of the Catholic Church. Yeah. And so because they come out of the Catholic Church and and the Catholic Church is very historical, um, a lot of Pentecostals completely reject church history. But unfortunately, sometimes you don't got to throw out, you know, everything. Mm-hmm. I mean, there is rich history there, but they just reject everything to do with church history. But there is a lot of rich history that Christians don't know. So it's almost like you know the Bible, and then it jumps forward to now. Yeah. Well, what happened? In five, between. What happened 500 years ago, 800 years yeah. ago, 1,000 years ago, 1,500 years ago, 1,800 years ago, and all of that gets thrown out, and it's so, so rich. You know, there's so many things that have happened within the church. And unfortunately, when Christians don't know their history, um, then there's a lot of mistakes you're, you're bound to redo because not realizing the things that had failed before. Well, like today we heard that, was it a priest? Was it that he was saying things that just seemed oh, so... Man. I got so mad. Oh, you guys, he was upset. He was like, where is yelling? Like, where in the Bible does it say that? Yeah, this guy... He was a priest, a very liberal priest on CNN. As you know, CNN is very liberal. And he was talking to Cuomo. Chris Cuomo. Yeah, yeah. the the guy that had the the Rona. Mm -hmm. And this guy was like, he had these little puppy dog guys looking in the camera, right? And he goes, you know, God is love and he has no gender. And this, and I'm like, what, where are you getting this yeah, from? Yeah, like, why are you feeding all that? Like, where do you get that, bro? I, you know? I was kind of like dumbfounded. I'm like, what the heck? And he just kept happened? saying it like two or three times. And here's the thing: is that you know, a liberal will hear that and see, 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 see. You know what I mean? And, and they run with it, and and it's like it's it's false teaching. Yeah. You know, it's false teaching out of a false mouth. You know what I mean? I'm going to get all upset again, you know, but... <laughs> That's man, what he was in the car, you guys. Just, I'm just like, oh my gosh, like read your Bible. <sighs> How many times does the Bible use God as a he over and over? It doesn't mean that women are less than. It doesn't mean, but this, to blatantly say that God is genderless, where does it say that? It does not say that in scripture. Mm -hmm. And it's like, so it makes me feel like you lied about something like that. Then that means I can't believe nothing that comes out of your mouth. Yeah. That's what it makes me feel like. Absolutely. You know, just. I pray for all the ears that hear that. Silly That it go in one ear and go out the other because you don't need, you don't need to pick up trash. You know, it's Mm. all stuff that. It's just stuff that is just not real. Silly people. You know? Yeah. Tricks are, they, for tricks are for kids. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was thinking the same thing. But, you know, guys, in these times right now that everything is going on, um, there's going to be so many people uh, wanting to say what it is that they want to say. Um, 
whether or not it lines up with the word of God. They're just going to be speaking. David, David used to always tell me, stop speaking out of your, the side of your neck. <laughs> you know, so, I know we're not talking about um, you know, speaking false things, but since we're on the subject, because um, we, we were talking about Peter. Yeah. But I want to throw this at you guys, right? It says this in 1 Timothy. I mean, wrong. Sorry. Second Timothy, chapter four, verse two, preach the word and be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. Second Timothy mm -hmm. four. And verse, this is what I really want to get to right here. Three, four, and five. It says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, and fulfill your ministry. We'll start from where? From two to five. Okay, mine starts with one. That's fine. Okay, in the message, it says, I can't impress this on you too strongly. God is looking over your shoulder. Christ himself is the judge with the final say on everyone, living and dead. He's about to break into the open with his rule, so proclaim the message with intensity. Keep on your watch, challenge, warn, and urge your people. Don't ever quit, just keep it simple. You're going to find that there will be times when people will have no stomach for solid teaching, but will fill up on spiritual junk food, catchy opinions that tickle their fancy. Wow. They'll turn their backs on truth and chase mirages, but you keep your eye on what you're doing. Accept the hard times along with the good. Keep the message alive. Do a thorough job as God's servant. Wow. Thorough. Mm, mm, mm. That felt like I just ate a steak. Filet mignon. That's some food, man. That's some food. Yeah, that's good. I like that. You know, the teachers are going to come just... Feed us all this junk food. Do you want all that junk food? Let's keep going. Second Peter. <laughs> go back to Second Peter? Second Peter. No, we're not going back to it. We haven't read out of Second okay, Peter. But... Chapter go 2. Back. Okay, go to Second Peter 2. Yeah, starting at verse 1. Check this out. Do it. I'm just talking about this because of that false teacher that was on CNN. <laughs> it says, chapter 2, verse 1. But there were also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, mm. even denying the Lord who bought them. And bring on themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their destructive ways. Because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed. By covetousness they will exploit you with deceptive words. For a long time their judgment has not been idle. And their destruction does not slumber. But there were also lying prophets among the people then. Just as there will be lying religious teachers among you. They'll smuggle in destructive divisions, pitting, pitting you against each other, biting the hand of the one who gave them a chance to have their lives back. Ooh, backstabbers. Oh, That's it died it. on you. No. Okay, hold on. Mm, 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 mm. Mm, mm, mm. That means backstabbers. Dang. Second Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy 2. Okay. All right, so where was I? Probably on two, two, yeah. two. When the going, okay, two reliable leaders. So Second Timothy, right? No, first Peter, second Peter. Oh my God, you just told me Second Timothy. It happens. I know it does. Okay. Chapter two. You're They'll in chapter one. Oh, you're in chapter no, two. No, I'm right. They'll smuggle in destructive divisions, pitting you against each other, biting the hand of the one who gave them a chance to have their lives back. They've put themselves on a fast downhill slide to destruction, 
but not before they recruit a crowd of mixed up followers who can't tell right from wrong. Oh, it almost sounds like the protesters and rioters and all that right wow. now. Whoa. Okay. They give the way of truth a bad name. They're only out for themselves. They'll say anything, anything that sounds good to exploit you. Whoa, that sounds very familiar wow. right now. They won't, of course, get by with it. They'll come to a bad end, for God has never just stood by and let that kind of thing go on. God didn't let the rebel angels off the hook, but jailed them in hell till judgment day. Neither did he let the ancient well, ungodly world off. Too late. He wiped off with the flood, rescuing only eight, not one. Okay. Yeah. Wait. So. Whoa. We just read Second Timothy. That's Paul talking. We just read Second Peter. That's Peter talking. That groups are going to teach false doctrine. So what does that mean for us? And I know we're going off subject, but oh well, the Holy Spirit took over. So this is what I'm saying. He always takes over. Is this, right? Is if they were warning us about false teachers, then that means false teaching is out there. False doctrine is out there. We can't go around with this whole little, oh, you're a Christian, I'm a Christian, we're all a Christian. No, if Peter and Paul were both talking about teachers that are going to teach false teachings, then you've got to have discernment to figure out what is false. You know what it also says? It also talks about there being followers. Of those false, of those deceptive, false teachers. deceptive teachers. And you know what? And I think that that's why it is so important that you know and have a communication yes. in all of that with our Father because... We need to know which direction to go. And here's the thing. It's going to be your choice. Yeah. It's up to you. Because he doesn't yeah. force himself upon us. We mm -hmm. have to make the choice. There's, there's three types of, of leaders, teachers, pastors, whatever. And this, this, is, this is it, I promise, right? You have one that loves the word of God so much that he destroys people with it. Or two, you have people that are people pleasers so much that they will twist that word of God because they want to please the people. Mm. And then there's the one that's in the middle that will not change the word of God for anybody, but he will teach it in love in a way to raise them up. Amen. So That's a balancer. Yes, there's a lot of people pleasers that will twist and change and pervert the word of God in order to make everybody like them. Mm. That's it. Mic drop. Oh, wait. Mind blown. <laughs> All right, guys. It's already 37 minutes. Yeah. And we started talking about Peter. We ended talking about false teachers because that false teacher on CNN talking blasphemy. It's so weird. Him and his little puppy dog eyes. So, all right, guys. God bless. They're going to be like, what are you talking about? I know. You guys should go watch it. It's just ridiculous. So, ridiculous. Um, meet us for Bible study tonight at 7 o'clock. Yes. We're going to go live. Yeah. If you aren't connected with us, please. Con we haven't said this in a while. We're going to talk. Mm. We're going to connect you right now with connecting with us and our prison ministry. Number one, it's the same number. 209 400 9725 and text the word H O R C. If you send that word, you're going to get a link back. Fill it out. That way you can be in our connection. Now, the second word is you text the same number 209 400 9725, but instead of H O R C, text the word prison and fill the same form out. But at the end of that form, it's going to ask you an address for your loved one that's incarcerated. So they can get a weekly sermon from us. Make sure that it's the um, your loved one's correct address, correct spelling. Everything has to be on there and their booking number or their mm -hmm. number. Make sure that that's included because if none of that's included, then it will not get to them. So we want to have these out prayerfully by, by tomorrow night or Thursday. Yeah. So please try to get that in right away so that way they can have the sermon out. Okay, guys? I noticed some of you don't know how to put the name. So if you have a letter from them, 
Take, take a, a picture. picture. Dang, we said it in stereo. Take a picture of the letter, the, the return part mm -hmm. for them, and uh, send send that picture to that number, the 209-400-9725.